Welcome everybody to Let's Chat Arts Edition. I'm sitting here with Kate Martin. Hello, everybody. Hey. And um, we're gonna kind of sit back and discuss kind of different variables towards mental health, arts, how they're connected, and kind of discuss what uh, got Katie into the arts and kind of her area of expertise. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your work? Sure. So um, I've been creating art ever since I was a little kid, um, on and off. Um, in my later years, I guess I took kind of a break. I went to school and became a teacher. Um, but then, um, yeah, I went through some difficult things personally. Uh, my husband and I, um, we got married and then we were so excited to start having kids because we got pregnant right away. And um, then I was eight and a half months pregnant and um, there wasn't, I didn't feel any movement any, anymore. So then I went to the hospital and our baby's heart had stopped beating. So we lost our very first baby, his name was Bo. Um, and it was for sure the hardest thing I've ever been through and almost broke me. Um, he, he was still born and he was beautifully formed in every way imaginable. Um, and we had no idea why, so there was no indicators as to what went wrong. So naturally, sort of the year after that, I, um, I was trying to put all my broken pieces back together and I didn't really know how to do that, but art was something that I had always leaned on and did in my past, so I kind of turned to, to art and to writing. Um, and that was kind of what really brought art back into my life, actually, that experience. So where would you classify your art mainly sits in what genre of Like style? style um, well, I do mostly oil paintings, some acrylic painting, and I've started to bring, kind of mesh my writing with my art now. So like when I do uh, commission pieces, um, often, like now I offer a piece of writing that goes with it. So it's like kind of like poetic-y writing. Someone will give me um, some words to describe the person that they've asked me to paint a portrait of. Um, but sometimes, like, the one commission was of a place, um, so they, they told me why the place was meaningful to their spouse, and so I wrote a piece about the, the place. Um, so yeah, so it's a mixture of writing and then typically oil, but I do do some acrylic painting too. Um, and then as far as style, um, well, I'll show you some stuff here today, and there's quite a few different styles. Like, I like to do some, like, playful gesture painting, and then there's some that are, like, more realistic, um, and then portrait work. Yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, we'll take a walk around and kind of see see your style, and maybe you can explain to us uh, each one that you're showing us so we have an understanding. Sure. Yeah. So this th this show um, was called Rise, um, and so these four paintings um, were sort of different um, pit stops of grief that I personally had, um, but. I decided, so the figures in them are kind of supposed to represent these different points of grief. Um, I know there's multiple different um, stages of grief and it's different for everybody, but these specific poses kind of, and in this um, sort of order for me, and like towards the end, because I realized sort of after losing my son that when you go through something difficult like this, it's like in a way there's all these gifts waiting for you on the other side of that grief. Um, so that's why she's kind of like euphoric at the end. Um, but then I added in some like very, uplifting quotes that helped pull me through some of that grief. Um, so this one is, we are all broken. That's how the light gets in. Here, Ernest Hemingway. Um, and these are actually mixed media on canvas because there's some oil, there's some pastel, um, there's gold, and the gold is really symbolic too. I'll talk a little bit about that after. Um, so this one, the quote is, weeping and aching, I long to honor your passing. I long to honor your life. Searching everywhere, I found only one answer, honor myself become all that I am and carry you inside that beauty. This one, I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. And this one is, she made broken look beautiful and strong and convincible. She walked with the universe on her shoulders and made it look like a pair of wings. So those four kind of go together. And then over here, so let's see, um, there's six portraits. So the idea behind this show was to highlight people who had gone through really difficult things but who had um, risen above. And so I wanted the stories to all be different. Uh, because of my situation, I, I have a, like, a kind of a bigger infant loss community around me, um, but I wanted the stories not to all be infant loss. So um, I asked my friend Joe Mitten, who's a photographer, to go to each one of these people's homes and photograph them, and then I painted a portrait. Um, from those photographs. So 
in this in the gallery, you see her photo and then my painting, and then um, I asked each person to write us their sort of story, cold notes version, and to kind of tell us what they went through that was difficult, how they overcame it, and kind of some advice for um, other people that are going through something difficult. So Amelia's story deals with infant loss. Um, and then we've got Tara. She's a um, wonderful local nurse, and she went through some difficult things and then was kind of going down a, a dark path, but then turned it around, and she's one of the most resilient building people in our community, I would say, for our youth. All these paintings have trees over top of them too. That's another kind of symbol. Um, a quote that always resonated with me was that during our storms, um, trees take deeper roots. So for all these people that weathered their storm, they all got a sort of tree. This one's Laurel Stevenson. And she dealt with, um, she was um, a victim of, well, sort of child pornography that was spread um, when she was young and she was in high school and some boys took advantage of her. Um, and so it's kind of a Me Too story in a way, um, but she has this beautiful life now. She's speaking out about um, how she's victimized and she's so articulate, so intelligent and such a survivor. Um, and so she's speaking out on some um, podcasts and sharing her story and giving other people that have gone through similar things a lot of hope. This one's Amy Hatcher. Um, she's a, um, a chiropractor in Brandon, and she has just been a beacon of light. Her son um, passed away, I think, a year and a half ago um, in Brandon, and she has done crazy amounts of re or, um, fundraising for organ donation um, since then, and she's been yeah, keeping his memory alive and speaking out. This is Aaliyah and her... Spouse. They were newly newly weds and they were kind of on honeymoon in Ukraine um, six months after they got married and he just slipped and fell and then ended up having to go uh, to the hospital and they just, he wasn't feeling great and they said, oh, he's okay. And anyways, long story short, he ended up dying in Ukraine and they were just, just married. So she's a young widow trying to navigate that. Um, and again, if you met her, she's just the brightest person, so happy, so positive. You'd never know she went through anything. And then we know this guy. <laughs> we got Jeff right there. So Jeff's story. Jeff, yeah. You do want to tell it? About no. no? Sure. Okay, so Jeff, yeah. Well, Jeff went through some difficult things too and like survived abuse of many different kinds, was also kind of went down a dark path and then turned it all around and like to be sober for how many years now? Uh, I'll be going on 11. 11 year. years, that's incredible. And then on top of that, all the outreach things you do with our youth and yeah, trying to help kids, mental health initiatives, even this initiative, right? Yep. Trying to talk to people about mental health and how to process it. And art is one of the best ways to do that, we both found. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Different formats. Absolutely. Um, so then these, and there's these two more paintings here, they're tree paintings. So again, they, the theme of them kind of goes along with um, the whole thing, just about trees taking deeper root during storms. But they kind of showcased, yeah, my different styles of painting too. The gold, um, yeah, maybe we can sit back down here. The gold is a different um, theme or layer, I suppose. Um, so not long after I lost go when I did that show, um, it was called Kitsukuri. And... Um, the whole kids are curry. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering the word because I'm sure, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it's a Japanese term um, and it means to repair or fix with gold. So our culture, like we often see, it's a very throwaway culture. So something breaks, we throw it out, get something new. But I think the idea behind this word um, is that like if something breaks, they they fix it or mend it with gold, and then the object is seen um, as being more beautiful for its history after. And I remember after losing our son, I remember like people would say to us, you know oh, I just feel so heavy when I think of you. And, you know, they weren't trying to be hurtful, but it was true. And so I just, I remember thinking like, you know, will I ever be shiny again? Like, will I, you know, will I ever? And then that, I, I read that quote and I had read it before, but it didn't really resonate the same. So when I read it that time, um, I thought like, oh my God, like you can go through really difficult things and you can become even more beautiful after. So, so that's when I did that show, Kids of Curry, and it was kind of big washes of color 
and in between the colors there was these veins of gold. So this show is kind of like, um, kind of a, a, a vein off of that show, but in this one that's why I wanted to honor other people because I realized there's so many people around us that have gone through really difficult things like yourself and that have risen above, so it's such a nice platform to be able to honor them. Well, that showcases that there's people in everyday society that mm. they may not have the same situation 110%, but they at least are going to understand and are approachable. Mm -hmm. Or you don't even know, like somebody in society you don't even, you deal with every day and you don't even know what they've been through, right? Well, exactly. Yeah. Um, did you find that um, despite the negativity and all the grief stages that you were going through, that there was really no obstruction in your art? Like it poured out of you more than it ever did before. Oh, 100%. Like, so I wrote, I'll just, I wrote this book and like I'm not a writer or I didn't consider myself to be by any means. Um, but this specifically, and we all know like writing is such a form of art too, but it, this poured out of me. Like, like if I, and I'm so glad I got it on to paper because even a year later, like I didn't, ex I wouldn't remember the experience as well, right? As I did when I was going through it. So, um, yeah, right after losing both that whole year, like I just, I don't know, I didn't think it was going to be a book or anything, but I just, it just, this, it just poured out. It just, just into the, I just felt like I had to write and it felt cathartic. It felt like a re release and it felt really good. And as I was writing it, I was also like, I'm a self-help junkie. So I like, I had found all these books and I already had some books to pull from, but, um, and then as I was like reading stuff that was like helping me, I was like, oh, you know what? Like this will really help other people too. So then I started like writing the excerpts from these books that were helpful down. And then I was like, at the end, I was like, oh, there's like something here, you know? So yeah, but hundred percent, I haven't had that kind of same like creative pull since like it was so strong right after losing him. So, and then like I said, this comes kind of a springboard off of it because it's what I'm passionate about. And that's what I've said to my students, my high school students in art class. I said, you know, the wonderful thing about art is that you can use it to highlight anything that's meaningful to you. Like, you know, maybe resilience isn't what seems super important to them at this age, but, but there, everybody has a cause that's important to them. Um, and like, to be able to use it for that is pretty cool, so. Well, I'd love to hear more about how the process of making art helps in healing. For sure. Even yeah. for, yeah. Yeah, both of you, I think, probably have something to say about that, so. Um, the two art forms in conversation would be interesting. Mm, yeah. The, like I know, with myself and um, whether it's my solo music or um, the duo that I'm a part of, we find it very euphoric and kind of, I don't know, you, you feel 10 times better when you're doing your craft based off that bad memory. It's almost like coping with your past. How do you see that on your side of the art section? Yeah, like I think, I think just like being able to spin something like tragic or difficult into something beautiful, like it helps like you're physically doing it, like right? So your hands are like touching it and you're making it. And then to see the aftermath of it, um, it's nice to see that it's, yeah, it's spun into something more beautiful. Like you took this difficult thing and made something out of it, right? Absolutely. So do you find the more, um, for lack of a better word, but the more you focus on that negative experience, um, do you find it to be more life-changing than any other negative experience? Well, I think you have to like f really feel it. Like I think a lot of people, our instinct, like we're afraid of those big emotions, right? So I think a lot of people, like our instinct is to either numb the pain or like to not feel it or to not talk about it um, and just pretend it'll go away. And the thing is, is it doesn't go away. So for, and I know, and I mean, everybody is different, but in my experience, like leaning into it and feeling it, like, I mean, it's intense, but I think that's why I was able to heal as well and like be able to say my son's name without tearing up and you know be able to tell his story and smile when I think of him because you know I learned through that experience just that like, like some lives aren't meant to be long but maybe they are meant to be big like Amelia Barnes said that to me and so it like yeah it shook me too because then I was like you know there's different measurements um, or different ways to measure things and so like even the length of uh, someone's life so his life was so short but like it was so deep and so rich and it's touched so many lives, right? So for me to be able to see that as like a success and a beautiful thing, 
um, yeah, I'd rather do that than not lean into it and kind of like brush under the rug. Okay. Um, from music standpoint, is it just question artist to artist? Do you find it hard to pull yourself out if you have to channel that? Because I know as a musician, in order to write something from the heart and meaningful, you have to channel into parts of yourself you really shouldn't be playing around in. Um, do you find it hard to pull yourself out of that sometimes? I don't think it's. A, I don't think that's the same um, across the mediums for me, anyways, because like I think my like loss or tragedy or this, the deep emotion I was going through, I, w I don't think I'm in it when I'm painting, you know what I mean? Like the idea was there, so like the gold, you know, and again, the gold for me was like always this positive, like this, like the sun on the horizon, it was like this. So I, I never felt like I was like in a dark space or like where I can totally see how that would be the case when you're writing lyrics or you're reading, you know, singing lyrics, so. No, exactly. Yeah, you're kind of stuck in that every time you play the same song over and over, right. stage and stage and stage. Right? Yeah, reliving it. No, for me, like these works, even like they're like they lift me up, like because the quotes were uplifting and they like they almost validate the darkness. Like even though like you, I love the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. You know, it's like, and it's like that. Was it is it a Kirk Cobain quote where he says, or is it thank you for the tragedy? I needed it for my art. That's Kirk. Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's that kind of like, not that I, you know, would ever choose to have that kind of tragedy in my life or anybody does, but you don't get a choice. And so when, you, when you're in it and you have to live it and walk through it, it's like, yeah, it's the, you do the best you can with it. Absolutely. Does the creation process of art help you with your life in other ways? I think so. Like my, my brain anyways is always like, like it never stops and I feel like when I know that I have something creative that I'm working on no matter what the project is I like at least I have somewhere for my brain to go when I'm sitting idle or when I'm like I'm like oh yeah at least I'm thinking about it whereas I almost feel like I don't know if it's the same for you but I feel like edgy or like more anxious if I don't have a creative project in the background but I, I kind of always have for the last couple of years I mean it doesn't have to be like specifically painting like it could be you're redoing your house or like a, a room in your house or something right uh, but for me, yeah, I just have to have something creative and then it helps me, yeah, just kind of stay level, I guess. See, and like, for me, I'm, I'm always doing something. So I mean, whether it's renovations or playing the drums, playing the guitar, or helping other artists work on their stuff. So I mean, there's always different variations of art or creativity throughout my day. But I mean, as for day-to-day, -day, Arts helps half of it. So I mean, being a business owner in the industry that I am, it adds its own stresses and its own negativity. So it kind of surpasses what art you're actually putting into the equation. Um, I spend more days now looking at someone else's art form and hearing someone else's story other than working on correcting my own. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, the minute I sit behind the drums or Pluck strings on a guitar, or all the negativity for the last week is up the window. Mm -hmm. So, kind of 50 50 on that one, I guess. So, it sounds to me like both of you produce something in the course of your art, whether it's songs, whether it's paintings, or, or poetry, or whatever. So, what do you think for yourselves personally is really what helps you? Is it the process of creation, or is it seeing what you have created? Oh, process for sure. Yeah, for me. I tend to agree. Like there, there's something that happens in that process that it, you, I, well, I'll speak on the music side of things. Like when you're thinking, you write your lyrics down and it's all based like from the heart, they're all rough. They're kind of half the words, half the time don't even make sense. But as soon as you sit with a guitar and you just start reading your lyrics, it just pours out of you. And just the brightness and the emotion come ringing from your guitar just uplifts you that little bit. You sit behind the drums, you start adding that drum line to it, and it just elevates it even more. And it's almost, it feels euphoric, I guess, in a sense, is the easiest way to put it. Mm -hmm. On, like, the music side, is it similar on the art side? Yeah, for, like, it's definitely, because it's, it's not the end result, like, and I try to tell my students that, like, if you come into my class and you 
are working on your piece for the entire period and like you throw it out after you it doesn't that doesn't matter like it doesn't change like you'd still get an incredible grade because the process of creation like the best artists in the world have closets full of terrible paintings like we all do right like you're never going to learn or do anything any better if it, so you can't be attached to the end result so to speak right so but when you're yeah like they, they say it's in you're in flow right so when you're when you're in flow it's like painting's the only thing i can do where i'll forget to feed myself like i'll lose track of time like i'll be like, oh it's like say seven eight hours have gone by like i should probably like <laughs> eat something um so yeah there's not a lot of other things i can do where i'm so sort of in flow that that happens or you get stuck on that no no just got to finish this just got to finish this and then it's four hours later four pieces later it's oh i gotta finish this yeah. <laughs> i think just i think just like people knowing that you don't have to be like good at art to like everybody's an artist like everybody has something to make and you don't have to be good at any of it to use it like we we're all creative we all need that outlet and like I, it, it always like it upsets me when people say, "Oh, I'm no good at art. I don't create a bone in my body." Like, yeah, you do. And it's like, and you know, the only way that any of us get good at it is by practice. It's like anything else. Um, it's not like you're just born. Like, you know, people think that you're just born that way, but it's like, no. Usually, people had an interest and then they just did it a lot, so they practiced a lot. But as far as like for mental health reasons and for just like, yeah, relaxation and using that side of your brain, like everybody should find something creative, that, like as an outlet, right? Well, I tend to agree, because you look at it like journaling, technically you're writing, that's mm -hmm. like a creative art form. You, um, you can go to any department store, really, and buy diamond art. Mm -hmm. It's still drawing your focus into something creative that ends up turning into a beautiful project at the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's always something for somebody, and no yeah. one can't do any section of art, it's just everyone kind of has their niche. Living is an art form, right? Yeah. Like yeah. living every day. We can day. walk and breathe the at way, the same yeah, time. The way you, yeah. <laughs> well, the way you sign your name or the way you spread jam on your toes. Like, we're, you know, it's... So, and then, yeah, also, like, yeah. Yeah, I forget what I was going to say. I well, tend to drum when I do the yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Katie, you are a teacher, like an art teacher, as well as an artist. Yeah. Um, so... How does your experiences inform the way you work with your students? Um, well, I think what's really cool is that I'm still a practicing artist. And I think mo a lot of the time when you start teaching, um, you stop making, right? Like you had, and that's what I've heard from a lot of artists and our teachers. So I think what's different about me anyways is that my students get a front row seat at what the life of an artist is. And I bring them in here and I'll show them, hey, this is what an exhibit is. And you guys can exhibit too. You just like, and you can get together with another classmate. You'd have enough stuff to fill the space. And I explain to them about like the themes and the underlying themes of work. And I try to, sh I try to take them along like a front row seat along the journey with me so they can kind of see. I really try to explain to them like you can really be an artist. <laughs> And you know, being and this is high school art, and mm -hmm. being a teenager is hard. Yeah. Do you find that um, along, you know, talking along these mental health lines, do yeah. you find that having students having that art outlet in school is beneficial for them? Totally. And when I am vulnerable with them, and I right like off the off the bat explain like, oh, you know, like this is the tragic thing that I went through, guys, and some of the best art I ever made came out of it, and I, you know, I can see some of them like their eyes will well up, or they'll but they'll be really connected, and then some of the stuff some, that the students have made and some of the things that they have said during the critiques, like blo it blows my mind how vulnerable they become and it's like this a safe place, but then it's so cool because vulnerability is so contagious that once one kid speaks up and says something about something they've been through and this art piece they made represents it, then it catches on. So yeah, it's a really cool thing. And I've seen some of the art that's come out of there. Like there's one in particular that really struck me that actually was part of one of the songs that you'll hear from the duo actually that kind of inspired me to write it but it um, it was a tree that actually had vibrant skies on one side and it was darkened on the other and I've always been a firm believer from the well the second day that I decided no I'm cleaning my life up and walking the street line that uh, there's there's always beauty in the broken. So just because I was broken does not mean that I can't achieve my own version of beauty, right? Mm -hmm. So when I looked at that, that just inspired. And that so came cool. right out of that, that class, right? So I mean, some of it is incredible and it's showcased all like all over town here. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I definitely recommend taking a walk and going and checking out some of the uh, 
the signage and stuff that they've made and different things that Katie's students have done as well? Yeah, the mural project. So the kids are um, painting two murals a year um, and uh, Nipah Tourism Committee um, got the funds together to kind of pay for that, which has been great. So yeah, we've got two up around town and then and people submit photo. Anybody from town can submit a photo um, and then the tourist, Tourism Committee kind of votes on which one they want it to do. And last year we had one a photo submission and then one we had the students design um, well, with the what it was going to be of, and we picked the best design, and it was that tree, yeah, tree. that you're talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah it's super cool. There's just outside so, this building. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they're so incredibly talented. Really, like they make me look good every day. <laughs> um, do you do you find um, can be a difficult question to answer, but um, do you find the kids in your class are happier leaving your class? Having I think expressed so. themselves I in a sense, yeah. shaking off that hostility that high school has to offer before I mean, they come in. Yeah, and I don't think like like I can take much credit for that. I think it's I mean it's the art room. There's music playing, so and they like are sitting with their friends and they're like encouraged to talk to their friends. Like it's a studio set up classroom, so they make they mostly make in that classroom. And I think a lot of high school is um, there's a lot of instructing happening at the front of the classroom, so they're they have to be quiet a lot, right? So. Um, it's a nice break in that classroom just for them to be able to just create and kind of relax, so, yeah. Do you find in an environment like that you see a lot of collaborative work going on? For sure, every time we do a project there, there's always like a couple of kids say, hey, we're gonna do ours together. Like even we, were, we did guerrilla art around town um, and even, even that assignment, like I had a couple of kids say, hey, I'm gonna do this and then they're gonna do this and they're gonna go together, which is awesome, yeah. It's nice. And I always say yes, like I always encourage them if they wanna work together. And it's never, it's never like one person's doing all the work. It's not that kind of situation. They just have an idea and they want to work on it. So, so being, uh, this is one question I don't, um, with the other TV series that uh, I'm involved in, I haven't actually had the chance to ask artists of different um, sectors from myself. But um, what are your views and thoughts towards the stigma face that arts is not beneficial to everyday? Society. I just don't want, I just don't understand it. Like I just blows my mind. Like I don't I guess I I guess I just think that people must not understand like how broad the arts is and that like you know it's like infiltrated into every aspect of their lives, right? Like down to like the packaging, like the labeling on their favorite like it's everything. It's right. So yeah, I guess I just think we're just a little misinformed, I think, because I think if they had the right information, they would it was like kind of just so obvious that it's yeah, it's not, it's not, it can't be up for debate. <laughs> right, that's yeah. kind of how I view it. Or um, even, what's your views on the people that will sit there and stigmatize arts by saying it is not a career, it is not yeah, a profession, you will never go anywhere if you're in the Again, arts. I just, I mean, I, just selective hearing, I guess. Like, I don't, I mean, and like one of the big things I have in my classes, I'll have like, I have a couple posters up of all the different careers and there's like so many and I try to explain to the kids, like, this field is, booming like there's so many I mean you can just be like a food I don't know what they're called but they like place all the food together for the food stylist a food stylist yeah. you can be a food stylist and make like great money and you're like lacquering burger buns so they're shiny right like there's just yeah. it's just endless I mean from you know animation and video game design and like it's just I mean it goes on and on like and so for them to know now with all of the tools we have and like we're so connected online and like it's just yeah, and I do find a lot of our kids now, though, it's becoming more um, valued at home. Like, it's like, um, yeah, there's quite a few kids now that I can see the families are like, they want their kids to be good at art. Kind of yeah. like, you know, they want their, want their kids to be athletic. So it's nice to see that it's a little, it's starting to be a little bit, it, they're still definitely like the statement you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I guess I just don't, it doesn't make sense in my head. So. I just don't really focus on it. <laughs> yeah. Anymore. Yeah. I, yeah, like, I kind of agree with you there. Like, when I first got asked that question, I, I looked and I said, okay, well, on my side of the arts, do you not have a radio? Yeah. When you sit in your car, what turns on? Mm -hmm. You put in your favorite round object into the slot, what's on it? Yeah. Right? Like, that's, that's kind of the way I've always viewed it. I mean, I just, it, everything would be so dull, right? Like, we're just, we're just, we're all, we're dynamic beings, and, like, that's just such a big part of our existence. Well, thanks for being with us tonight.
Katie. Hey. And uh, if anyone's interested in any of your artwork or to have a discussion with you, can you tell them how they get a hold of you? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I'm on social media on Instagram or Facebook um, at Katie Martin Artist, or my website is www.katiescanvas.com. Awesome.